just a minute. प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस एंड स्ट्रेस लास्ट प्लस वी हाव डिड दी द्रेस स्ट्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेन टू थीटा Plus tau x y. Oh, that is cos two theta. Plus tau x y. Tau x y sine two theta. So the equation we have derived. This is the equation that uh, we have derived in the last class also. Uh, similarly, there is the equation for the sigma y dash also. But if we put and again we are calculating the tan to theta, tan to theta in terms of what we have derived in last class, that is uh, tau x y, tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y. Okay. If you put there is C here, there is two values again in sigma x dash or in sigma y dash. This is the stresses developed in the oblique plane or any point on the on the plane sheet. In that, in both the cases, there is two terms that is cos two theta and sine two theta. In place, if you put these values in case in cos two theta, if you put the values of cos two theta and sine two theta, then we can find the principal stress. Principal stress. If if we put the values of cos to theta and sine to theta, then we'll find the cases of the principal stress. How we'll calculate this principal stress? From where we'll put these values? Because you, uh, we put the values of sine theta and cos to theta. This two cos cos theta and sine to theta from this tan to theta from this tan to theta. Because in the tan to theta is derived. From the equation, we put the shear stress zero. In that equation, we put the shear stress zero. Shear stress means she, tau x dash and y dash. We put the shear stress zero. By putting the shear stress zero, we are getting this equation: tan to theta is equal to x by sigma x minus sigma. That means here the shear stress is zero. Now, when the shear stress is zero, that means that plane is the shear plane, principal plane, and the stress on that plane is the uh, principal stress. So accordingly, if you find the values of sine two theta and cos two theta from this equation, then we can simply put this uh, put the sine two theta and cos two theta in these equations, and we will find the values of principal stress. So let's find the values of sine two theta and cos two theta from tan two theta. It, there, for that, we will need only the trigonometric operators. Nothing earlier. Nothing any mathematics. Nothing the related to the stress and strain. That's why I am clearing here, clearing my canvas here. See here. To find out the values of uh, sine two theta and cos two theta from the tan two theta uh, from trigonometric relationship, if we put, then we will have sine two theta. I am di directly writing this because you can derive this um, so plus or minus tau x y divided by sigma x minus sigma y square divided by four plus Tau square x y, tau square x y or whole root over. This is the value of sine two theta. Similarly, if you calculate the cos two theta, cos two theta, yeah, then we can write the equations in that format also in the same format plus or minus of um, sigma x minus sigma y by two 
sigma x minus sigma y by 2 divided by sigma x minus sigma y by y by y square by 4 plus tau square x y tau square x y whole root of this is the value of cos to theta and sin to theta. If we put these values of sin to theta and cos to theta, these two values, if we put this sin to theta and cos to theta values in the sigma x dash, then we can calculate the principal stresses. Then we can calculate the principal stresses. So let's put the now let's put these values of sin to theta and cos to theta in the uh, in our uh, sigma x dash value. So if you putting that value, if you putting that, so I'm now, now sharing my screen. If you are putting sin to theta and cos to theta values in that equation <laughs> in the above equation of sigma x dash, then we'll find sigma x max sigma max and sigma minimum there is a sigma minimum also we can write both them at the same time and that is sigma one this is sigma two sigma one is the maximum stress maximum stress maximum principal stress or you can say the major principal stress and sigma two is the minus principal stress now the equation will be like that the equation should be like that sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus sigma x <laughs> minus sigma y by 2 the whole square whole square plus tau square x y row tau square x y row whole root over whole root over I think the all of you are about this equation. All of you are about this equation in two dimensional state of stress, whole root over. If you put plus here, if you using the plus here, then uh, if you put the plus value here, then we'll got the major principal stress. If you're using the negative values, then we'll find the minimum or the minor principal stress. By putting the, the this equation is obtained by putting the values of sine to theta and cos to theta, which is obtained from the tan to theta, tan to theta value. Tan to theta is obtained where we making the shear stress is equal to zero. If we are making the shear stress zero, that means that plane will be the maximum uh, principal plane. The stresses developed on that plane will be the principal stresses. So how to find out the stresses? By putting the uh, theta values obtained from that equation, obtained from this equation. So we'll put the values of uh, theta values in that equation of the sigma x stress, then we'll find these values. So this is all about the um, principal stresses acting principal stress acting on a oblique plate or any point or any point on the seat okay this uh, remember this equation this is very important equation from uh, from calculation point of view so uh, this is the equation to calculate the principal stresses and principal uh, principal stress on um, a two dimensional or plane stress condition this is for plane stress condition. So the question arises here to how to calculate if you find the values of sigma 1 and sigma 2. You are here calculating the principal stress. So can you represent the direction of the principal stress in which direction this principal stress will be acted? How to represent the principal stress? How to represent the direction of the principal stress? Here we are now calculated the principal stress. How to represent the direction of the principal stress? How can we represent this directions? Can you say anyone of idea about how to represent the direction of the principal stresses? So let's draw that. My screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it uh, clear now? No? So if you go for the calculation of the direction of the principal stress it is a plane stress condition now i'm drawing that the plane stress condition this is a body this is your body this is a plane stress condition body and here the stress sigma one sorry sigma x this is the stress sigma x also this is only the sigma x this is sigma y sir the previous screen is not clear yet 
Okay, just on new sharing. New sharing. I'm going for the new sharing. Is it visible now? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Is a sigma x, sigma y? Yes. So this is this. This is the stress conditions. The plane stress conditions. Since there is a two times, so there is any or any one of the stress is zero. That is the plane stress conditions. So it is a plane stress condition. And then the, there is the shear stresses also. That is tau x y. Tau x y. This is tau x y. This is tau y x. This will be tau x y. So likely. So in which direction uh, we know that we have a principal stress that is sigma one. Sigma one is our principal stress. Sigma one is a principal stress. So in which direction uh, the principal stress will be acted upon? This is our stress, normal stress. This is our shear stress. Then which direction the principal stress acts? How can we? Sir, opposite that? direction. No, that's not right. So for that we have to draw the shear diagram. This is Java. I'm just using the scale here. Uh, I'm just drawing. See this. This is our shear. This di this direction. This is our shear diagonal. This is called the shear diagonal. Shear diagonal. Okay. When both the normal stress, when both the normal stress and the shear stresses are present, the shear stress, the principal stress direction will be in between the in between the these directions. This is the principal stresses. This is the direction of the principal stresses. This will be the direction of the principal stress. Are you clear now? Are you clear now? Where will the yes, direction sir. of the principal? Yes, sir. The principal, if both the stresses are acting, the shear stress and the uh, normal stress acting on the body and the plane stress condition, then the principal stress will be in between the shear diagonal and the direction of the normal stress. In between the shear diagonal and the direction of the normal stress. That's the direction of the principal stress. Then the question arises here, the other is you can say, the direction of the sigma one or the principal stress will be lie between the algebraically largest normal stress, the algebraically largest normal stress. Point out my um, terms. The algebraically largest normal stress and the shear diagonal. So now clear now here. So condition is again the condition is that if there is no shear stress on the on this plane, if there is no shear stress on this plane. So now where is the principal stress direction? In which direction the principal stress acts? If there is the shear, no shear stress, the again in that case the principal stress will be lie along the direction of the major stress, major normal stress. Okay. Similarly, if the question arises, if there is no normal stress, if there is no normal stress, and there is a shear stress only, if there is shear stress only and no normal stresses, then on which direction the sigma will act? The sigma or the, the principal stress will act in the directions of the shear diagonal. If there is only shear stress. Now clear the three conditions or the three directions of the shear stress. Yes, sorry, three direction of the principal stress. Is it clear now? So next we'll move to again. What we do here? Now we are calculating the principal stresses. The sigma one, sigma two, and its directions also calculated. So the question is here to find um, how to find out how to find out the maximum shear stress. How to find out the maximum shear stress value? To find out the maximum shear stress value, we have to uh, go for the shear stress. What is the shear stress we have written in the equations? The shear stress value previously we are go find that tau x dash y dash is equals to sigma y minus sigma y. This is sigma y. Just to remove this. Sigma y minus sigma x. 
by 2 sin 2 theta plus tau xy cos 2 theta this is our equation of the shear stress so how to find out this maximum shear stress now when this shear stress will be maximum when the shear stress will be maximum who will tell this when the shear stress will be maximum to to find out any value of maximum from that equation how do we how will find out the maximum value from any equations simply we differentiate to find out any value maximum value from any equation they simply go for the differentiate now so we will go for the differentiation so how will differentiate on which operator will differentiate will differentiate according to the theta so we'll write the equation that will differentiating the shear stress with theta with the theta so we'll write the equation d tau x dash y dash divided by d theta will be equals to zero this is the case of maximum shear stress maximum shear this is the case of maximum shear stress so now differentiate this equation now differentiate this equation what is the value u of 10 by shear by differentiating this equation we will find that now i am clear my canvas everything every so i am recording this video for your eg and i will publish it on youtube you can check my youtube channel uh, after the publishing i will give you the links so don't worry about it because i am not waiting for you to write anything or take the screenshots so now let's uh, do, by differentiation of the shear stress we found that tan 2 theta i'll be using a term s why using s i'll tell you later uh, sigma y minus sigma x divided by 2 tau xy or we can say this is the value we are obtaining here or we can say negative of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 tau xy this is the tan theta value for maximum shear stress. So why you are using theta s? Theta s notation is used for shear. Shear. Because we, we, previously we have developed an equation in terms of tan to theta. We have developed an equation previously in terms of tan to theta. In that tan theta that is equals to your um, uh, 2 tau xy for the principal shear plane. To find out the principal plane, we have derived the equation of tan to theta. Then we have found that tan to theta is equal to tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y. Sigma x minus sigma y. If you check these two values here, I am using this in terms of n. I am not using, I am now, I am using theta s here. And for this case, this is theta n here. So if you see the both the values, if you see this is one value, of theta s, this is one value of tan to theta n. What you will find here? What you will find here? Can you tell me what you have find here? This is tan to theta s is my negative of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 tau x y. And now it is tan to theta n is 2 tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y. There is a negative term here, there is a negative term and it is reciprocal. It is negative and reciprocal. The meaning of that negative and reciprocal of between the between two angles is that it will be perpendicular. It will be going to be perpendicular. The theta s and theta n both are perpendicular or orthogonal to each. Theta s, theta s is perpendicular to theta n. Okay. There is an orthogonal relationship in between them. So where we can get the maximum value? So in which value of theta we can we can obtain the maximum shear stress value? On which value of theta we can obtain the maximum shear stress value? That will be when theta is equal to. Then we are using tan to theta. No? Tan to theta means when theta is forty five degree, we will find the maximum value of shear stress. By putting this in equation, we will develop the maximum shear stress. 
the equation for the maximum stress stress will be developed. Then we can find the tau max is the equation for the say, maximum stress stress will be going to like that. Sigma x minus sigma y divided by two square plus tau square xy whole root plus. Is it that? Now you find out the values of maximum shear stress, principal stress, major stress, and the minor stresses also. All you are calculated here. So remember the equations, the derivations, and the formulas for your so solving the from solving the some solving some problems. It will require for your problem solving also. So this is all about your two dimensional state of stress or we can say with the plane stress conditions so if you any if you have any doubts before going to the three dimensional state of stress you can ask me here otherwise i will switch to the three dimensional state of stress if you have questions you can ask or otherwise i'll go to the three dimensional state of stress As previously, I have in the first class, I have already uh, show you the state of uh, stresses in three dimensions. I have already show, show you the state of stresses. From that, I will started from the diagonal plane, diagonal plane that I have shown you in the first class of the three dimensional state of stress. That diagonal plane is the triple one plane. If you read the uh, uh, physical metallurgy, the Miller indices plane, then easily you can find out that the diagonal plane is nothing but the triple one plane of a unit cell. So um, here we will go to three dimensional state of stress. State of stress. Three so what is the triple one plan i'll show you here the conditions it's like that if this is our um, negative y take this third this is x y z three axis the three axis is x y and z the diagonal plane is lying like Okay. This is the diagonal plane. This plane will be the diagonal plane and you will represent all the points and this is the axis x, y, z axis. This is the diagonal plane see here and the will print pointing this. This point is j, this is k and this point is l. JKL. The triangle is JKL. That triangle is JKL triangle. And here um, we'll show the different stresses acting on it also. The maximum shear stress when we are taking the plane. This is a plane of paper. When we are talking about the maximum stress, that maximum stress is always normal to the plane. This is a plane, the normal means when I am seeing this plane means the normal means that the plane, the, the normal stress means that the stress directly coming towards me. If it is a plane of paper, no, that uh, the normal stress is directly coming towards me. That means it is orthogonal to the plane. So that orthogonal will be lie in that manner. I'll sing this, this is sigma one. This is the normal stress acting on the, acting on that surface of the area. I'm taking for the three dimensional calculation, this area will be very much important. So, the, in the three dimensional state of stress, now three conditions are there always. When I'm talking about the three dimensional stresses, there are three stresses where uh, calculate, we are considering on three stresses. Three stresses means what? The st all the stresses are equal, or all the stresses are not equal, or all the, any two of the stress are equal. If all are equal, there are four, four conditions. There are four conditions. So what about these conditions? If I'm telling you that, what about these four conditions? Yeah. So, clear ones. 
So that means see, there are three stresses. One is sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. Three stress. If all are equal, if first thing, if no, none of them are equal. First condition. Second condition, if all are equal. If all are equal. The third condition, if any of them, any of the two is equal. That reverse may be applicable. Sigma y is equal to sigma z, not equal to sigma x. What, are the, what is about this, all these conditions? We are taking consideration of all these conditions also. If all the stresses are unequal, if all the stresses are unequal, that is called triaxial state of stress. Triaxial, sorry. Triaxial state of stress. Triaxial stress. If all the stresses stresses are equal to each, each other, then that is this conditions will be called as. Um, this is the um, this is all about the principal stresses. So I am writing this equation. Some modifications will be made here. This is all are the principal stresses. So uh, sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three. In terms that will be better. Mm. These are the principal stresses. So it is not the normal stress. It is not wise to call this normal stresses. So these are the all normal principal stresses. When all the principal stresses are equal, that state of stress is called the hydrostatic or spherical state of stress. This is hydrostatic. Hydrostatic. Hydrostatic or spherical. Spherical state of stress. When any two of the stresses, principal stresses are equal, when any two of the principal stresses are equal, that is called your cylindrical state of stress. This is the cylindrical. Cylindrical state of stress. So, this is all about the conditions I have explaining you the what are the triaxial state of stress, hydrostatic, hydrostatic or spherical state of stress, and what do you mean by the cylindrical state of stress? Sometimes the circumstance of one mark will be asked like that. What is what do you mean by spherical state of stress? Or what do you mean by the cylindrical state of stress? These types of questions will be sometimes asked in your exams or the internals also. Then I'm going to my news uh, uh, main script here. Yeah. So here the area is, uh, we are taking that plane, JKL plane, the diagonal plane of a three-dimensional body. So um, uh, area of the area of the JKL, A is the, here, take some assumptions, A is the area of JKL plane. Okay, A is the area of the JKL plane. And here also taking, as there is the stress is there, I'm removing this, we need space. I have space is slow, so I need that space also. Mm -hmm. So what is the state of stress uh, conditions on each plane? If you see here the plane, this plane, if you see this plane, see this plane, I'm marking this plane. This plane. this plane. If you see this plane, uh, there are um, stresses are always there. This stress, there will be the normal stress normal to the plane, the stress normal to the plane that is your direction is sigma z. This is the z direction. Uh, the, the, this is the z direction. The stress is the stress acting on this plane. This is the z plane. 
you see this is the z plane so if this is a z plane the stress acting normal to the plane is the sigma z and the if there is a normal stress then there must be the shear stresses and the other other shear stresses so this will be the tau what do you call that is tau z y and this is tau z x tau zx similarly if you see this plane if similarly if you go to this plane similarly if you see this plane what are the stresses acting on this plane the stress normal to the plane this is the cx plane if you see this this is the x plane the stress normal to the plane that is sigma x it is sigma x that sigma x direction is not equal to the direction of the principal stress sigma 1 so don't confuse there Sigma one direction is principal stress direction. Sigma x is a normal stress on the plane. So don't confuse over there. The directions are different. This is the sigma x. If there is a shear stress, if there is direct stress, then there will be the two shear stress values also. This is tau x y. This is tau y z. Similarly, if you go to this plane, this is the now it is the y plane. Now it is the y plane. Next, the y plane. If you see here, the there is the stress is here sigma y. The direct stress sigma y. Then this is sigma tau y z. Sorry, the stream is this tau y z. And here the another tau y z. We just uh, represent this tau uh, y x. you can represent this tau yz in the direction also in the reverse directions also for betterment of the understanding tau yz now i think you are clear about the state of stress on the diagonal plane the state of stress on the diagonal plane today i will not deriving the equations here but i will give you the all the assumptions and the notations that will uh, use for the calculations and during the derivations let similarly what we have done in the in case of plane stress conditions today we will also uh, take three directions lastly we have take lm here we take lmn What is that element in the um, in uh, in the two-dimensional state of stress? L is the cosine angle between the oblique plane and the normal plane in that particular direction. In that the L is the x with the direction between the x and x axis. That is the cosine L is the cosine angle between x and x axis. M is the cosine angle between the y and x axis, and n is the cosine angle between the z and the x axis. so this is the question l m n are the direction cosines of the stress of the stress that is cosines of the angle between the x y and z axis since the free body of the figure must be equilibrium this is the equilibrium case uh, equilibrium the forces acting on each face must be equal must be balanced so as in the last case we are balancing the forces we are balancing there is the forces so from which forces we are balancing now balancing the forces the different component of that st stress on the plane so if there is a stress on the plane of the plane there is in that plane previous case there is plane stress sigma sigma d we are there there is we have two stresses we are representing s x and s y as there is a, as it is a three dimensional case so we have s x s y and s z three stress the three component of the of a single stress the three components as it is a three dimensional case then the stress has the three components there is x y s x s y and the s z these are the stresses along each axis the component of the stress along each axis what do you mean by then sx sx is the component of the stress acting on x axis y is the component of stress acting along y axis and sz is the component of the stress on the oblique plane on the z axis so this is all about the sx sy and sz so what is the values of that sx sy and sz so Say this is the stress. This is these are the stresses. 
these are the stresses na so if though these are the stresses how can you calculate these stresses how can you calculate this stress stress is force into area sorry stress is force per unit area so if we multiplying the stress with the area then we can calculate the forces or we can calculate this is the um, by this we will calculate the different forces along this plane and if we are calculating the force along sx if you are going for the force along sx that simply we can write sigma l as we have written in the previous case also sy is equal to sy is equal to sigma m and sz similarly sz is equal to similarly sz is equal to with that sz is equal to your sigma l m n sigma n okay these are the stress conditions these are the forces okay these are the forces here so we need to balance the each forces in the each directions so balancing and the developing equations will be discussed in the next class so till now we'll stop here i'll stop my sharing here